To gain happiness, throw yourself out like a spider in all directions, in an adhesive web of love that catches all that comes. Leo Tolstoy. These eight-legged, fanged weavers of silk have been a symbol of fear throughout time and space of humanity's collective consciousness. Found on pretty much every terrestrial habitat, save Antarctica, spiders make up an integral part of nearly every terrestrial ecosystem. And thankfully for shrimp and fish, none of them have managed to evolve gills to conquer the oceans. This meant that wherever humans went, except for the farthest reaches of the poles, seas, or space, they encounter spiders. Despite the vast majority of them being no bigger than a peanut, and the largest of them being the goliath bird-eating spider, which is the size of a dinner plate, these creatures still have instilled a great deal of terror in human cultures throughout the world, perhaps only matched by the snake. This probably stems from a combination of stealth and venom, and while most only have enough venom to kill small prey like insects, there are some, like the widow spiders, that can be deadly. Not surprisingly for Australia, its largest city, Sydney, is home to the endemic habitat for the funnel web spider, which can produce a bite capable of hospitalization and even death. It literally lives within the city's metropolitan area, which is rather strange and unusual for the worst of the worst to dwell in urban environments. But given that they are fond of urban environments, they have been subject to anti-venom production. There is even a word for the fear of spiders, called arachnophobia, which technically refers to the fear of all arachnids, but is mostly used to refer to spiders. Given how spider bites can be deadly, depending on the spider, phobia, which means an irrational fear, maybe is not the best word to describe it. This has also inspired one of the very few comedy horror movies that is not cinematic garbage, arachnophobia. With the exception of one species from Central America, every other extant living spider species eats meat. And by meat, I don't mean pork chops, I mostly mean insects and other invertebrates, with the exception of the largest of spiders that can sometimes eat birds or fish or frogs, etc. And because they often eat pests, this, despite the fear they induce, often has resulted in humans viewing spiders with not only terror, but also some degree of respect for the free pest control they provide. Contrary to popular belief, spiders are not insects, but arachnids. A class of animal with eight legs, which lives alongside scorpions, mites, ticks, harvestmen, whip spiders, and other creatures so terrifying, harmful, and hideous, they make spiders look cute in comparison. Spiders have by far played a more important role than any of them, in part due to their ability to spin webs of spider silk a protein fiber, often used for catching prey, sometimes used for food and sometimes for mating. Throughout much of human history, spider silk was not commonly used in the production of silk. Most silk has been produced by silk worms, as unlike spiders, they're not territorial or overtly aggressive towards each other and therefore could be farmed. This is despite the fact that spider silk is stronger than that of the silkworm. For this reason, there were attempts to weave the fabric from the silk the spider weave from the web. However, these did not come to fruition until the early modern period. To this day, there is no method of producing spider silk on a mass scale, despite many of the functional uses related to fashion, the military, and medicine. One attempt that did work with rigorous effort was that of the golden orb weavers of Madagascar. Madagascar is famed for its incredible and bizarre wildlife, and this spider is no exception. It spins silk, which is golden, not literally made of gold, obviously, but of a shiny yellow color. Their webs have been used to produce gold and silk. The garment took years to produce, with over a million wild-caught spiders. One company is producing quote-unquote biosteel, which uses genetically modified goats to produce the protein from these gold-weaving spiders in their silk. Well, in their silk that comes from their milk. This can be expanded on an economic scale, if possible, and be used for a variety of applications due to the stronger tensile strength of spider silk. Pound for pound, kilo for kilo, spider silk is stronger than steel beams. And this could possibly be done on a large scale as goats, by and large, don't eat each other alive, unlike spiders. The human fascination with spider webs goes way back, probably to oral traditions, 
but we have no audio recordings from 10,000 BC, so I will have to make do with a story from the earliest civilizations with the written word, ancient Sumeria, in what is now Iraq. The Sumerians even had a deity of weaving, given that civilized people need clothes. Her name was the goddess Utu, who oftentimes was depicted in the form of a spider. Given that female spiders are usually larger than male spiders, and a woman did a great deal of the weaving of clothes, the combination made sense. What does it make sense in what happened afterwards, in which the goddess's dad, Enki, the god of rivers and streams, wanted to, uh, let's just say, bang his daughter, and promised her an offering in the form of vegetables in exchange for the uh, inappropriate behavior, let's just put it that way. Not thinking that a basket of carrots was good enough to engage in incest, she refused until Enki got her drunk and then did some graping. Enki's wife came to the rescue of the spider, and she saw that Utu was being Bill Cosby and removed the genetic material of Enki and planted it in the ground which sprouted up his crops. Scientists have yet to find any evidence of stems and leaves sprouting up from some spunk that was removed from a Bill Cosby spider goddess. Perhaps someone should test this hypothesis. It is rather strange that the first recorded story involving a spider involves S.A. because spider mating habits are oftentimes the result of a male being victimized. After the mating, female spiders will oftentimes eat the male spiders. At least they didn't die virgins. In West Africa, the spider took the role of the trickster archetype, most famously with Ananasi, who was a mainstay in West African folklore, oftentimes associated with wit, wisdom, duplicity, and narratives. Anasi's folklore has played a similar role in West Africa as Aesop's tales in Greece have played, oftentimes combining moral teachings to the use of simple stories involving animals. Given that many slaves were shipped from West Africa to the Caribbean and Southern United States, Anasi played a role in Afro-Caribbean and African-American culture. By the 1960s, many African-Americans wanted to re-embrace the folklore of their ancestors, and Anasi became a re-interested symbol, if you could call it that. Pop culture has also been influenced, such as Spider-Man. Marvel comics oftentimes include the notion of the passing of the torch or title to another person to become the next manifestation of this heroic superhero figure. While Peter Parker became Spider-Man from either a radioactive spider or a genetically modified super spider, depending on the comic or movie, during one of the comics, it was revealed that Anasi was the first Spider-Man, tying African folklore to American pop culture. Just as spiders from mythology and folklore have been icons of fear and terror, but also wisdom and respect, so too have their depictions in pop culture. Tolkien depicted spiders as giant monsters, while E.B. White, in his equally famous piece of literature, Charlotte's Web, portrayed the secondary character Charlotte the Spider as a heroine. Spiders and the fear they induce have also been subject to far stupider falsehoods, such as the bogus claim that the average person eats around eight spiders every time they sleep. I really don't know how this BS spread, but spiders are far too fearful of humans breathing to willingly become your midnight snack. Notice that I mentioned that they're afraid of our movements. While being an animal that has inspired so much fear, the reality is that spiders are far more fearful of us than we are of them, and for far better reasons. Maybe it's time we sympathize with a little bit of that terror that they've instilled in us. Thanks for watching.